I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Aegis Hammerhead and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assess activated. Systems green. Thank you so much to all the supporters that make this channel possible. Welcome to A Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here and today we'll be discussing the features, functions and benefits of the Aegis Hammerhead. We'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats with similar ships, review pros and cons, and I'll give you my thoughts on the Aegis Hammerhead. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Hammerhead is an armored gunship manufactured by Aegis Dynamics and used by the United Empire of Earth Navy as a fleet screen and patrol spacecraft. It entered UEE in service in 2773 and saw extensive use during the latter years of the Messer era. With the fall of the Messers, Aegis tried to distance their fleet from the corrupt regime and began to release a civilian model of the Hammerhead at the start of the 29th century. The Hammerhead is manufactured by Aegis Dynamics, a human spacecraft manufacturer based on Cestalus. Today, the company is a major manufacturer of both civilian and military crafts. As of today, the Hammerhead is not available for sale standalone. When it does, it goes for $720 US. However, it is available in a couple of concierge packs. The escort pack with the ships seen here for 1325 and the convoy pack with 15 ships. Check the pledge store for more info on that one. The Hammerhead is also available for sale in game for around 12.5 million Alpha UEC. Now that we know a little bit more about the Hammerhead, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. Let's get right to it. On the nose, we have our one and only docking collar. Beneath this, we can see into the bridge. Let's walk around the starboard side. Here we have our first turret. There are six of these total, including this one on top. Each turret boasts four size four laser repeaters for an insane amount of DPS. Heading underneath, we have elevator B. Elevator A is on the port side. Just above this is a maneuvering thruster. You'll be seeing a few of these as we walk around. Here's our second starboard side turret. Underneath it, we have one of four missile bays. Each bay has two size five missile racks with four size three missiles each. If you tally that up, the Hammerhead comes stock with 32 size three missiles. That's a lot of missiles. These flaps underneath here is where the rear landing gear is stored. Around the rear, we have our one and only aft turret. From here, we can also see its four massive main thrusters. As for the rest of the ship, it's identical to the starboard side. All right, the hammerhead is pretty big, so to make this simple, we're gonna start this tour off in the bridge first. Just know that this is not directly accessible from the outside. After exiting the bridge elevator, we have both the pilot and co-pilot seats. The co-pilot seat has some controls to its left, a few MFDs, and what looks like an enunciator panel. The pilot seat is similar, but slightly different. It has four MFDs, a 2D radar, functional enunciator panels, and it has its controls on the right. All right, let's head upstairs. There is an option to take the elevator as well as a ladder. Entering into the main deck, we find ourselves at the bow of the ship. Straight ahead, we have that docking collar we showed earlier. This will be an excellent entrance once docking is implemented. In this airlock, we have what looks like four armor storage bays with two lockers each. From here, we'll head towards the port side and work our way around the outside and tour the inside before heading upstairs. This is our first port side turret. It, just like all of the others, has four MFDs, a 2D radar, and has four CF447 Rhino laser repeaters. Heading back down the hall, we come to one of two elevators. This is typically where you would enter the ship. Continuing on, we have a hall with four escape pods and access to the second port side turret. Inside this room, we have our port side engineering quarters. It has a power plant, an engineering station, some spaceship stuff, and a cooler. Here we have where radar and life support communications will be held. Next, we have the engine room slash cargo bay. This is where 40 SCU of cargo can be stored. Also, Back here, we have access to the aft turret. We'll come back here once we get ready to go upstairs. Back down the hall, we have more of the same, except on this side, we have access to two batteries. And inside this engineering room, 
we have a second cooler and power plant, as well as another engineering station. I'll show you what this one looks like. It's just a big MFD, and it's functional. Leaving here, we have the other hall with escape pods 5 through 8, and access to the starboard side turret. Further down, we have the other entry elevator, and finally, we have our final starboard side turret. Alright, so we've come full circle, so let's take a look at the inside portions. First, we have our captain's quarters. Here we have an office with a desk. Further in, we have hab space with a bed to log out in, a sink, shower, and a head. This desk can be sat in if you'd like role playing, but it's not functional. There's also a cool trophy case in here that I just noticed for the first time. Here's the access to our final turret, the top side one. This elevator here will take you up to the second level, but let's finish down here first. Next, we have the crew quarters. In here, we have barracks for eight crew members. There are also two bathrooms. They each have two showers and a sink. I'm not really sure where the space shitter is though. We could leave out through the other side, but we'll go back the way we came. Before we head up to the engineering deck, we find a couple of more storage lockers. Just as with the bridge elevator, we have ladder access as well. Ignore these two floating beds, they're just above. I'm not even sure if you'll see them or not. Here we have another engineering station with a functional MFD. Now, let's head down the upper hallway. Here, we have access to one of our shield generators. Past this is the mess. You got a table, plenty of shelves, a skylight, and finally, past all of this, we have a pantry. Currently, there's nothing functional in here. Heading back out, we can see our second shield generator. And finally, past those missing rhinos I've been looking for, is that elevator we didn't use when we were on the first floor. I'm excited to announce that Subliminal CV and Ace Attack have partnered together to do a giveaway of an NZXT Kraken Z73 CPU cooler. You have until 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday the 24th to enter. Click the link in the description today. Now that we know a little bit more about the Hammerhead, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. I'm aware that this ship cannot be truly compared to most of the ships on this list, so take these rankings with a grain of salt. However, as usual, the Google Sheet document is linked in the description. The Hammerhead weighs in at over 4.6 million kilograms, and it comes in dead last. It fits in with a volume of 138,000 cubic meters and takes ninth place. It looks like having a thin cross section gives it an advantage over the carrot. It has a cargo capacity of 40 SCU and ties in fifth place. It has a max crew size of 12 and ties in first place with the carrot. It carries 11,000 quantum fuel units and ties in second place with the Starfarer Gemini. It crawls by with an SCM speed of 105 meters per second and comes in ninth place. It strolls by gingerly with a max speed of 1,000 meters per second and takes fifth place here as well. It has a maximum pitch rate of 20 degrees per second and ties in last place with the Gemini. It has a maximum yaw rate of 18 degrees per second and ties in dead last. It has a maximum roll rate of 60 degrees per second and comes in sixth place this time. It has a total hull HP of over 60,000 and takes second place with the carrot. It has a physical armor damage reduction of 2% and ties in sixth place here. It has an energy armor damage reduction of 10% and ties in first place with half the ships on this list. It has an EM, IR, and CS reduction of 0%, as well as all of the ships on this list. The Hammerhead does not have pilot weapons, so naturally it ties in last place here with the Carrick and the Retaliator. It has a stock turret DPS of almost 16,000 and absolutely demolishes every ship compared. It has three times more damage potential than the Carrick. It has a stock missile payload of over 120,000 and takes third place just behind the Freelancer Miss. And the Aegis Hammerhead can be purchased in game for around 12 million Alpha UEC. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say its pros are its missile payload. 
Having eight size five missile racks is excellent. Stock, it comes with 32 size three missiles, but these could be swapped out for 16 size four missiles or eight size five torpedoes. Or if you really want to annoy some light fighters, 64 size two missiles or any combination for endless options. I think it goes without being said that its turret DPS is unparalleled. Also, having size four weapons gives it the range to keep most ships at bay. Next is something that's hard to quantify with there being no real competitor to the Hammerhead in game just yet, so I'm just gonna go off of lore here. Lore states that the Hammerhead is actually pretty nimble. This is the reason for the hole in the middle. It was to shave weight. So when the Polaris and Perseus come online, it will have an advantage over them in this category. Its hull HP is again outmatched, considering the Carrick takes up a lot more space and they have about the same amount of hull HP, the Hammerhead must have more hull HP per destructible section of the ship, making it much harder to destroy. Its front and side cross sections are actually pretty slim, great for avoiding Idris railgun fire. And lastly, its multi-crew gameplay if you have a large group of friends or an orb to play with is great. As for its cons, requiring such a large crew to fully man is a turnoff for a lot of people. I've seen countless comments from people saying that they love the ship, but they won't buy it until they're able to hire NPCs to man the turrets. Now, its front and side cross section might be small, but its top cross section has a huge broadside. One con for having such a large ship is that it can be costly to load out. Well, actually, I've got you covered here. Make sure you check out my loadout guide that will save you hundreds of thousands of Alpha UEC at zero cost of performance. And finally, I have really only one gripe about the ship personally, and that's the placement of the flight deck. I just don't understand why it can't be front and center or at the top center. It's literally there just to be different and to make sure it stays true to the Hammerhead name. So what are my thoughts? Well, the Hammerhead is a tough ship to talk about. It's the best at what it does, controlling the airspace around an AO. In my opinion, there are currently four use cases for the Hammerhead. Fully manning during the dynamic missions like Xenothreat. It's a ton of fun to pack full of gunners and blow stuff up. But currently, there is no dynamic mission running. Second, it's crewing up to take down the Arlington mission Idris. But the problem is, with splitting up 225k, let's say five ways, isn't worth the time. And there are much better ways to make money. Third is using it as a tank to clear your crime stat. Yeah, you heard me. You get a crime stat because you did damage to a neutral ship after some poor NPC got killed by the splash damage on your C-788s during a bounty hunting mission. This never happens, I'm just making this up. Then you can just hop into the beast and fly over to SPK or Security Depot and don't have to worry about the turrets killing you before you land. And lastly, number four, if you're fortunate enough to have six friends to fully crew up the hammerhead and get a crime stat, you can take on your entire server until some damn dirty missile throwing ape sends one too many torpedoes your way, ending your GTA 5 style crime spree and sending you and your whole crew to an overnight standing pleasure. <clears throat> Sorry. This is actually pretty fun and I love doing it on stream with viewers over at twitch.tv slash subliminals TV, Thursday through Saturday, 10 a.m. Central. I digress again. The Hammerhead is another great expensive ship that doesn't really have enough gameplay to justify purchasing it in game or with real money. However, we all know it will be a very important force to be reckoned with when more gameplay features come online. So should you buy one? That's up to you. You big old space whale you. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours down in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my loadout guide for the Aegis Hammerhead here. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending out for UBC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.